love to explore nature. Some of my best friends are animals. <laughs> I'm Isabel Yamazaki. I love technology and inventions. Yep, I'm a geek. Hi, Giles. Hi, I'm Giles. Artificial intelligence at your service. Together, we're exploring how amazing discoveries in nature are helping us design brilliant new human inventions. New technology that will make our world a better, greener and more amazing place to live. <laughs> Today, we find out which animal can help us create faster and more efficient ships. It's massive! And what animal can help us design super quiet fans. Can you hear me? The answers will amaze you because, because they're, they're wild, wild but true! true. around the world. And right now, there are about 5,000 of these ships sailing our seas. That's a lot of big ships using a huge amount of fuel. Hi, Giles. Ship ahoy! Wouldn't it be great if ships could reduce the amount of fuel they used? Well, it's an interesting thought. And not surprisingly, shipping companies around the world are interested in the same thing. If ships can be made to glide better through the water, they use less fuel, saving shipping companies a lot of money. It would be so much better for the environment. Less fuel. Well, an animal might have the solution. Here's the cryptic clue. Now, over to you. OK, I'll call Robert. I bet he'll have an idea. Bye. Hey, Robert. Hi, Isabel. We need to find an animal that could help ships glide through the water better so that ships can use less fuel. There's not much of a clue, just this. Wow, it looks like armour or something. I'll get on it. Thanks, I'll see you soon. So an animal that can help ships better glide through the water. I reckon I need to get in the water myself. Underwater, the first thing you notice is that all the animals here make swimming look easy. And many are super fast, like the sailfish, and the tuna. Whoa! All the animals that I looked at certainly are very, very fast. But I think there's an animal that's even faster and displaces a lot of water. Yep, you know what I'm talking about. I think it's time for me to get out of the water. Sharks make swimming look super easy. Even though many of them are huge, they seem to just glide along. Maybe they have the answer to making a ship's hull more efficient. Over to Isabel. Oh! Hey, Robert. Hi. I'm pretty sure that I've found the animal that I'm looking for. I think the answer is sharks. Sharks? They're big, but they're fast through the water. Cool. I'll look into it. See ya. See ya. So, let me see. Sharks, locomotion... Wow. Sharks make swimming seem effortless. So, Isabel, I think you and Robert have honed in on a very interesting candidate. So fill me in on your thinking. Well, it's clear that they can move through the water really easily and they're really efficient swimmers. It says here that mako sharks can reach a top speed of up to 100 kilometres per hour. Oh! <laughs> there are many amazing things about sharks and they're not all man-eaters. Let me show you something. That's a whale shark. They can weigh over 21 tons and be more than 12 meters long, but they don't harm humans. Anyway, that's another story. What you should perhaps look at is how to deal with a basic principle of science that governs how efficiently objects move through the water. What principle is that? That's an interesting question, isn't it? Let me know what you come up with. Okay. Let's think about this. For an object to move, it has to have some sort of propulsion. That's true. And shark propulsion is very effective. They have massive tail muscles, but like I said, 
Why not focus on how the shark seems to glide effortlessly through the water? And that's what we want our ships to do. So the answer has got to have something to do with less resistance, less drag as it moves through the water. Now you're getting there. So it must be their skin. I bet it's really smooth so the water slips past it really easily. I'll just zoom in. Wow! Up close, the shark skin looks amazing. And it's not smooth at all. It does look remarkable, doesn't it? And you're right, it's not smooth. If you touched it, it would feel quite rough, like sandpaper. It's made up of millions of tiny ridges called dermal denticles. So that's the secret. Who would have thought it? A rough surface creates less drag than smooth. I've got to call Robert. Hey, Robert. Hey, Isabel. How did you go? Shark skin isn't actually smooth at all. It's rough. So why don't you try painting the canoe with something rough, like painting paint, and see if it creates less drag? But boat hulls are normally smooth. Aren't they? Yeah, but shark skin isn't. It's really rough, like sandpaper. OK, leave it with me. Bye. This is paving paint, and it's used especially for areas that get wet. It's got grit in it so that when it dries, it creates a rough surface. And I'll be painting it all down this canoe to test out the rough shark skin theory. There we go, that's a pretty good coat of paint. Now for the tough part. Waiting for the paint to dry. <laughs> It's really rough. It even looks rough. Look at that texture. OK, now let's see how the canoe goes in the water with its new rough skin. Hmm, can't say I'm sold on this idea. I'm not sure this is any easier than when the canoe had a smooth finish. In fact, I think it's even harder. Hey, Robert. Isabel, this is definitely not working. It's back to the drawing board. See you back at the lab. That was rough. Shark skin might be rough, but I don't think this is the answer. Really? I don't get it. Maybe we were wrong about shark skin being the solution. Actually, Isabel, you're wrong. You're not wrong. Er, if you see what I mean. Um, not really. OK, have a look at this. It might help float your boat. <laughs> This is what happens when water flows past a smooth surface. And this is what happens when water flows past the paving paint. As you can see, the water close to both surfaces becomes very turbulent, which is what causes drag. Now look what happens when water flows past the shark's dermal denticles. The way the denticles are shaped and the way they fit together creates unusual tiny vortices which are actually less turbulent and create far less drag. That's brilliant. Nature is amazing. It certainly is. And researchers in Germany are now copying the structure of shark skin to create new coatings that can then be applied to the hulls of ships. This is the amazing new technology that can make ships faster. The coating is called high tech. High is the German word for shark. The coating is based on the shark's dermal denticles. Why don't you talk to a member of the team? Sasha Bukba. He's waiting for you online. Oh, okay. Hi, Isabel. Hi, Robert. Hi, Mr. Bukba. Giles says you've used shark skin technology to make ships faster and more fuel efficient. Yes, we uh, developed a special paint for the ship industries or for the aircraft industries. This works on an aircraft as well? Yes, this is right, and we test also on the new A350 airplane from Airbus. The mainly part is to reduce the fuel. The ships can drive into the water easier and we have no problems with pollution or other things. I'm wondering, Mr. Buchbach, have you ever met a shark? Do you like them? No, no, I have no uh, problems with the sharks. I love sharks. We do too. Thanks so much for talking with us. I sent some samples to you and um, please uh, do directly the tests and you can hear the difference between a normal surface and a shark skin surface. That would be so cool. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Isabel. Bye, Robert. Thank you for the interview. Hey, Isabel. Ooh. It's arrived. Let's check it out. 
So this is the high-tech fake shark skin that will cover oh. a ship's hull. Look at that. Wow, you can actually feel those little tiny ridges. It makes a squeaky sound in one direction and not the other. Let's examine it under a microscope. I'm just connecting the computer to the microscope. OK. Whoa! It looks so cool to see those tiny ridges up close. Yeah. But they don't really look the same as the shark's dermal denticles. Hmm. That's right. But the tiny ridges have the same effect when travelling through water, creating less drag. The high-tech also has another benefit. Barnacles find it harder to stick to the tiny ridges, so that's another big plus for shipping, because barnacles on ships also create drag and are a lot of trouble to get rid of. But wait, there's more. It seems that even microbes have trouble living on shark skin-like surfaces. So similar materials are being developed to cover door handles and bench tops in hospitals and other places to prevent the spread of germs and infections. Wow. I wonder what else could be done with shark skin technology. Here's the answer. Time for me to hit the water. First, a lap in my normal swimsuit. Now to try the other swimsuit. Suit. And it's actually called shark skin. These suits have microscopic elements, a bit like dermal denticles. Let's see how it goes. Go! OK, I'm cheating. But professional swimmers are convinced shark skin bathers make them faster. And anyway, I have more important matters. Time to put this shark skin to work. <laughs> Question. Then I have a challenge for you. Find an animal that could make fans and machines less noisy. I'm on it. <laughs> Is that animal you, Walker? Hello. I don't think so. <laughs> Oka is off the list. What else have we got? Maybe snakes. They have no ability to make noise at all. Or what about tigers? They're very good at sneaking up on their prey. They're silent killers. I'm still not sure what animal could help us make quieter machines. Hmm. Oh, hi. OK, here's a clue. What do fan blades remind you of? Well, they spin around in the air, so wings. Good work. That's it. Have a look at these birds in flight. The eagle, the falcon, and the owl. Which of these is the most silent? Um, an owl, definitely. Thanks. Oh, look, it's a barking owl. How awesome. 
I've got to get a better look. Owls are amazing. When they fly, they really are very quiet. I guess they have to be to sneak up on their prey at night when there are hardly any other sounds. Hey, Robert, so what have you got? It has to be the owl. The owl? OK, why is that? I'm pretty sure it's the aerodynamics of its wings, but I'm still not exactly sure. I'll look into it right now. Bye. There must be a simple reason why owls are so silent compared to other birds. OK, so this is an owl wing. And this is a falcon wing. And that is a pigeon's wing. The owl wing does look different to the other birds. You are getting there, Isabel. Giles! Check out this video. OK. This is super slow-mo footage of the turbulence a pigeon's wings create when it flies over a bed of down feathers. Now look at what happens when the owl does the same thing. Whoa! There's such a difference from when the pigeon's flying over the bed of downy feathers and the owl doing exactly the same thing. The owl's flapping hardly disturbs the down at all. How does it do that? I wonder if it has to do with that soft down on its wings. Because the other birds I looked at didn't seem to have down like this. I'm about to do a really cool experiment to see just how silent an owl's flight is. OK, I'm ready. OK, have you released him yet? Yep, he just flew past you. What? Really? I didn't hear a thing. Let's try that again. Has he flown past yet? Yep, you missed him again. Really? That is so cool. I didn't hear anything. That's amazing. So I think it's the down on the owl's wing that lets it fly so silently. So I was thinking maybe we should do an experiment to see just how silently it can fly with down. Come with me. OK, so we're going to simulate the down on the owl's wing using these cotton balls on the plane's wing. But first, let's record the sound of air passing over a normal wing. So it looks like the sound is quite loud, but I'm not sure if that's the fan or the air passing over the wings. Well, let's hope the cotton balls make it quieter. OK, start gluing. That one on. Perfect. All right, let's test it out. OK, I'll turn it on. Record. It's still really noisy. Yeah. It's hard to tell if the cotton balls are making a difference or not. OK, you two. The down does help the owl to fly silently. But there are other, perhaps more important reasons too. You should take a closer look at the owl's wings. Maybe you've missed something. All right. Let's have a look. OK. Oh, so I can see the down on the wings. What else are we looking for? Try looking more closely. Look at the edge of the feathers. Hey, look. It says here the leading and trailing line of feathers on an owl's wing has a serrated edge, almost like a hair comb. And it seems that there are three main reasons for the owl's silent wings. The first is the soft, downy feathers covering the surface of the wing. And the second is the serrated feathers on the leading edge. And the third is the tattered trailing edge. So the serrated edge cuts into the wind. Finally, the tattered trailing edge helps soften the turbulence, leaving the wing. I guess in other birds, like the pigeon, the turbulence and the sound of the wings is created from the hard trailing edge. Hmm. As the air flows over a pigeon's wing, all the turbulence arrives at the trailing edge at the same time, which produces more noise. Now, there's a package on the table from a German company called Ziel Abe. Why don't you open it up? OK. <laughs> all right, ready? <laughs> yeah. Wow, it's massive. <laughs> Meet the Owlet Fan, Mark II. So this is what we saw a glimpse of at the start. Yeah. That's right. See if you can work out what part of the owl the fan has copied. That's easy. It's the serrated edge of the blade's trailing edge. Just like the feathers at the edge of the owl's wing. Exactly. 
and here is one of the men who made the fan, Peter Fenkel. Hi, Isabel. Hi, Robert. Hey, Mr. Fenkel. So, why did you focus on the owl? Now, we looked at the birds in, in general, and then we thought, well, the predators are obviously the ones who are excellent in approaching their prey. And then we came pretty fast to the owl as a predator in the night and being so silent that even though everything is silent around it, they still can't be heard. So this is what we try to mimic. So your fan copies how an owl's wing works. It's very difficult to, to copy a feather from an owl. But I think we've been very successful by doing that. We reduced noise by more than 50%. 50%? That's a lot. Thank you so much for talking to us, Mr. Fenkel. Bye-bye. OK, so let's compare the sound of this normal fan to the sound of the outlet fan. All right. OK, and record. Pretty high. So shall we test out the outlet fan? OK. I'll turn it on. The audio levels of these fan blades are definitely lower than on the normal fan. So the blades inspired from the owl's ring really work. I mean, you can hear the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine what a world filled with technology based on the silent owl would sound like. Or rather, not sound like. Imagine if all fans in the world were like the Adelaide fan. Whisper quiet. Wouldn't that be amazing? Imagine if machines everywhere had whisper quiet fans. It sounds wild, but could one day be true. 